Welcome back to another season of Cobra's World, the show that grants you an all-access pass and behind-the-scenes look at one of South Africa's premier franchise teams, the world sports betting Cape Cobras. We aim to give you a fun-filled look at the entire team on and off the field while unlocking the diverse characters and cultures that make up the WSB Cape Cobras. The World Sports Betting Cape Cobras is more than just a team of highly talented cricket players wanting to stamp their authority on the South African cricketing landscape. They're a team that understands and appreciates that what they're doing is bigger than themselves. This has been proven through their Spirited Cricket Initiative, in which every 50 and 100 run partnership contributed a value to the pool, which would be handed over to beneficiaries of the players choosing. This year, four establishments benefited from the Spirited Cricket Initiative, namely Rainbow House, as nominated by J.P. Dumini. Ubushle Benina, nominated by Aviwe Mgojima. Durbanville Children's Home, nominated by the Milan brothers, Peter and Yanaman, and George Linder and Second Chance, nominated by Rory Kleinfeld. So, so on the basis of what the Proteas do is sort of Protea Fire, a similar type of thing is initiated uh, you know, at domestic level. So the Cobras wanted to have some form of attachment to their support crew, um, and particularly obviously the, in the Western Cape um, where, they, you know, where they're covered. So, so that's the campaign is all about trying to initiate in rallying the, you know, the players with the non-players, with the support group and you know, those sort of things. We're trying to actually in, in, um, encourage through inspiration, through our involvement, through time, um, through a little bit of money, uh, trying to inspire them to live and, uh, live and play as winners in their lives. So that's sort of what we uh, are stretching to do with the campaign. There was three beneficiaries that came to, to practice today. And fortunately, there was actually one of mine as well, Rainbow House, which I've been involved in for 10 years now. Uh, but as I said, it's uh, the stories that come out of these, these beneficiaries and the organizations, it's mind-blowing. And you know, you, you think about the fact that you, get, uh, you go through a bad run of form or you get dropped from a team, and you think about the circumstances that they are dealt with. As I said, it just puts things in perspective and hopefully, you know, we are able to share the story uh, with the general public and, and more, in, more in particular, the Western Cape. Um, I wasn't shocked because I've known JP for a long time. Um, he's always contributed towards us. He's given us a bet, signed, you know, um, contributed financially, given stuff to our second our charity shop. We have a charity shop that supports the home. So it's been nine years of actually um, interacting with him. But I think it's also a team effort. Aman is going to a second home, which we've been saving for, we've been fundraising for. We're opening a second home in April, May month. So it's gonna be awesome for them. Thank you very, very much. Musha Bendina, we provide dignity packs to girls in the areas Nyanga, Filippi and Guguletu. My cousin Avi Gijima plays for the Cape Cobras, so he nominated us because we invited him to one of our fundraisers um, in 2017, yeah. So then he nominated us for this program. It means a lot because it's sad when uh, young girls can't go to school because it's that time of the month and they end up um, sitting at home and missing class and therefore not passing and how will girls then be successful if they can't go to school because it's nature. So they're giving us sanitary towels, roll on, um, face cloth, uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes and uh, lotion and that will be provided to the needy kids that we have identified in Nyanga, Kukulet and Filippi and hopefully with what they've given us and what we have from other people that donate, those donations will last the kids for six months. Durbanville Children's Home is based in Durbanville itself. Um, we've been around for 135 years, and this year we celebrate being 100 years in Durbanville itself. We care for about 144 vulnerable children, um, aged two years up until 18 or 19 years for them to have the opportunity to also come to one of the games. I mean, some of these players are the superheroes. So I think it's a very nice motivation for them as well. It's such a blessing for us and it's, it's very difficult for us to receive any funding from any form. And it's always a privilege for us to, to receive donations. 
The 2018-19 season ended on somewhat of a sour note for the World Sports Betting Cape Cobras. However, there were numerous outstanding achievements along the way, and the players and management's efforts were celebrated at the annual World Sports Betting Cape Cobras Awards Dinner, hosted at PPC Newlands. Who knew that cricketers could clean up this nicely? Having made his debut for Western Province at the tender age of 16, JP Dumini has officially brought the curtain down on a 19-year career with the Cape Cobras. I guess the reality is that that's the end of the line for me in terms of Cape Cobras. Um, it's been an amazing journey, 19 years, a 16-year-old kid playing his first game here for the Western Province B-side. and Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday, man, playing in a final against Zimbabwe. And uh, it's amazing how quickly it's gone by, but uh, great friendships formed, some exciting times on and off the field, some hardships, uh, a lot of hardships, but uh, I wouldn't change it for anything, you know. It's, it's what shaped me as a person, it's built my character, and uh, I'm very privileged to have played so, mu so many years, not only for, for uh, the Cape Cobras and, and Western Province, but also for my country. As a young kid, you, you grow up and you, you dream about playing um, you know, at Newlands and representing Western Province and uh, dreaming about playing with some of the greats of the game. Uh, Herschel Gibbs was one of my role models growing up and I was very fortunate to meet him at 15 years old. Uh, my dad actually met him uh, out for dinner somewhere and uh, managed to get him to come to our house as a birthday surprise for my 15th birthday. So that was the first time I met him. And I remember my dad was at a function that my dad told him I was still 15. And he told him that, watch out, this kid is going to play with you one day in South Africa, for South Africa. And I remember how embarrassed I was, like, how can my dad say that? And lo and behold, five years later, I represented my country with him. Attention swiftly shifted to a small matter of who would walk away with the coveted Player of the Year trophy, but this was not the only award up for grabs. The CSA T20 Player of the Year was scooped up by veteran all-rounder Vernon Philander, and what a competition he had. The award for four-day franchise series player of the year went to the man who bowled 511.5 overs and claimed 54 wickets at an average of 27.74, none other than the captain, Dane Pitt. I had a good season in the four-day competition. We didn't, I didn't get the team over the line um, with the performances. So yeah, I mean, being the best four-day player in the, in the team is really a... A big honour for me. Um, it's the best season of cricket I've had in my, my career besides 2014. 54 wickets, the most as a spinner in the country. Broke all records for the franchise, so it's a proud moment for me. But it would have been a lot better if we won the competition. A lot of people go, yeah, we're a young team and things like that, but um, some of us have played together for a while now. So it's, it's down to us really to, to get things in the right direction. We're getting to those big moments and we, we're not pulling, pulling through, but I guess if we pulled through, we would have been in a lot better place. Um, so we're just keeping ourselves honest at the end of the day. Having retired from the longer format of the game earlier in the season, Rory Kleinfeld's 15 wickets, including his first ever Pfeiffer, at an average of 16.8, saw him walk away with the Momentum One Day Cup Player of the Year award. White ball cricket is something I really enjoy and, and I always try and have a bit of fun with it. Um, for me, obviously red ball is the, the ultimate format of the game and put a lot of energy into that over, over my career. So for me now, it's all about having fun playing white ball cricket, trying to whack it out the ground and, and knock over some poles. And that's what I did this summer and, and enjoyed it. Captaincy was, was interesting, it was very interesting. It was, it was enjoyable, firstly. Um, obviously a bit stressful at times, but um, I, I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I tried to be pretty innovative with the way I did, did my, my thing. Um, but yeah, in general, it was, it was good fun. I had a good, good bunch of lads playing. We had great banter in the change room and on the field, and we enjoyed ourselves. Obviously, it was disappointing not to, to bring home a trophy, but I still feel like we, we had good fun and, and 
we kind of built towards something in the future. Like I said, it's, it's always nice to, to get recognition. But uh, like I told someone earlier, I would, I would easily hand this trophy back to, to win the actual cup, you know. But it wasn't to be, um, so, so hopefully next year we can get over the line. The big winner on the night, though, went the way of a young man who made his world sports betting Cape Cobra's debut this season. The highly talented opening batsman racked up a total of 1,234 runs over the three domestic competitions. And it came as no surprise that he claimed the Young Player of the Year, the Player's Player of the Year and the coveted Player of the Year awards. Yeah, it's a very humbling experience, um, obviously a good feeling, but a bit of an empty feeling seeing we don't have any trophy to show for it, but uh, just keeps us motivated to hopefully next year have a bit of a fuller feeling, you know? Deep down, I think I did all right uh, across a four-day competition. I did, I did well, then I got injured. Um, the other two I did okay. I didn't expect to receive the awards, but um, obviously still very happy. Um, but there's, uh, we can do better. My first 100 for the Cobras against the Lions was a great moment for me. Then the one-day comp where me, I got to bat with JP, one of my the guys I looked up to playing for the Pro Tiers for a couple of years while I was still a kid. So batting with him, chasing down the Dolphins target in the reduced one-day game, well, that was a good moment. And uh, quite a honor to bat with my brother because he's also a lot older than me and I looked up to him. I look up to him still, uh, his work ethic, everything. So hopefully we're planning, well, from my side, I plan on getting 100, 200 on partnerships with him, make it big, so we both can do it. So just got to keep working so next year they can look back on more moments like that. That's a wrap on another season of Cobra's World. We hope you had as much fun watching the players being taken out of their comfort zones as we did, and hope to see you next season, where there will certainly be more light-hearted moments. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. Until next time.